Okay, this guide's designed to get you as many sarts as possible as quickly as possible, let's go. The first thing is don't spend your sarts haphazardly, instead just pick one class and just level that. For some people that might be heavy assault or it might be medic. The next thing to know is that you always want to be accepting missions. Now the mission system rewards you things based on the thing that you have the least of. So what you want to do is you do not want to spend your ISO initially and you do not want to spend your A7. This will mean that more often you'll get SARS as a reward. You also don't want to spend ISO until you're really sure on which class you're going to play because each ISO that you spend is about the same as two SARS. The next thing to know if you want to gain a lot of SARS is that revives have about the same reward as getting a kill. Now if you combine that with joining an outfit and you participate in their organized ops, they're going to be dying a lot because they're going to be trying to capture bases. As medic you can also play solo, but it will be a bit more difficult, especially initially, because you won't know which bases to go to in the same way that a platoon leader would. Now also some outfits will play vehicles, and if you want to do that instead, that's something you may want to do instead. Now before we go into the more niche and slightly less rewarding SART reward systems, I want to first mention that getting kills on planet side is not super difficult once you get some basics down. As you've probably noticed, a lot of people are playing Heavy Assault and that's because it's the best infantry class in the game. So you may want to consider, at least initially, starting to play Heavy Assault if you don't want to play Medic. And um, use your default gun, get a one-time scope on it, get a grip. And you can usually get a few kills just doing that, which will net you some starts, and then you can use that in order to progress whatever you actually want to get. Now, in combination with this, I want you guys to get used to picking the correct base. Now, if you hit the U key, you redeploy. Essentially, what you want to be doing is you want to be looking for bases that have a flash on it. And those are indicating that there's going to be a fight there. And you want to pick ones in which you have less population than the enemy, and that means that there's going to be enough people for you to kill. I want you when you guys are going to these bases to get into a habit of making sure that you're checking your corners and you're not pushing in mindlessly. In combination with going to this base, picking the right base, I then want you to learn to look at the minimap. Because when you look at the minimap, it will give you a good indication of where the enemies are and where your teammates are. If you stay around where your teammates are, but always at the front of that fight, you'll usually have a decent time in terms of infantry combat. Make sure that you use your mouse wheel in order to zoom out and see the minimap more effectively. The other way to get starts is via membership. The reason is that you get a nanite boost when you get membership, which allows you to pull more maxes and things like that which are going to help you increase the amount of kills that you get and therefore the amount of starts that you get. A good example of this again is the infantry max which allows you to get kill a disproportionate amount of people. It's meant to be not pulled too much and that's why it's got a big nanite cost. But you do want to make sure that you're using it as much as possible, especially if you're a new player. And don't feel like I'm only telling you this because it's like a bad class for new players. It's probably the best class in the game, and usually I can get a 10 kill streak if I'm using a max. It's very, very strong, and it's in theory better than any other class, including Heavy Assault. I also want you guys to get into a habit of when the fight's finished, the second you can't find any more enemies on the minimap, I want you to redeploy. Do not wait around for everyone else to redeploy, do not walk to the next base, do not drive to the next base. Redeploy, get back in the fight immediately, that way you'll get more starts. The next one I wanted to talk about is I wanted to myth bust. A lot of bad guides that tell you to use scout radars or try to use sundies in order to get some starts, or they may tell you to mine cortium or use ammo packs. They might tell you to repair, they might tell you to use the shield recharging field. All of these methods are subpar and they're not going to get you that many starts. I am someone who's spammed the ant with the scout radar and I can tell you with certainty that you don't get many starts. I've known personally someone who's used a scout radar Valkyrie for a very long time and they don't get that many starts. I've played mining with Cortium for a very long time now, and that does get you a decent amount of starts, but it isn't something that you want to rely on. The gameplay isn't super fun. If you're just looking to relax after a long day of work or something like that, mining Cortium isn't a bad way to earn starts, but it certainly isn't the best one. Using ammo packs for the most part isn't going to get you that many starts, 
As someone who's trained a lot of new players, I can tell you that new players have awful map awareness and they have no idea of where to place the Sunday. So also you don't want to be leveling a Sunday because you're just going to place it in the wrong base and nobody's going to spawn on it. If you do get good at placing Sundays, in theory you can get a lot of starts doing that and that's what I used to do, but I don't recommend it for most people. There's a few other things that in theory you can do and I will list them just so you can make your own decision if you want to do them. One of them is you can rat bases and basically you can go with a scythe ejection seat or with a valkyrie, pilot yourself to a base, get out and then you can start to capture it. And then you try to point hold it by yourself and try to get as many kills as possible before the enemy takes you down. This is good for gaining starts because it's going to mean that you, you're going to have a guaranteed opposition there and also means that you're going to have the starts from capturing the point and also holding the point. It'll also get you good at 1v1 engagements relatively fast. If you are going to do this, keep in mind that there is the lattice system, which means that you can only capture territory if it's connected to one of your bases and furthermore, the enemy has to not be capturing it. If the enemy are capturing it, you won't be able to capture the base you're going to. There are some other ways that you can earn starts, and I'm going to go over those now. And these are all viable. You could play an infiltrator class with a CQC SMG, and you could in theory do pretty well. And essentially you play that similarly than you would with a heavy assault, but you're looking to get behind the opposition, but you're going to be in the same bases, just playing in a different way. You could in theory also play Light Assault. What I'll tell you about that is that a lot of the time aircraft will pick you off if you play Light Assault and if you're going to be indoors you may as well be playing Heavy Assault. But Light Assault is something that is slightly underpowered on certain bases especially on rooftops but for the most part Heavy Assault is going to be better. You could also look into the Engineer Mana Turret because that is really really strong especially in infantry engagements because essentially the cone in which the enemy can shoot you is small. You would want to use this anti-infantry turret in situations where the enemy is pushing into you. So that's going to be bases that you're trying to capture that the enemy is going to be running into. Now if you are looking to increase your knowledge on infantry play, the best way to do that quickly is probably look up YouTube compilations or look up really good people on, on Twitch and they can kind of, just by watching them and watching the way in which they play, the pace that they play at, their map awareness, you start to learn a lot passively just by watching them through that method. There are a few other things like double XP weekend which happens on the last weekend of each month. Now I'm going to sound slightly insane for saying this, but the other way to gain starts is by actually playing the game. So if you're doing something that you don't enjoy, you shouldn't do it. So if there's something in this guide that I've recommended that you don't agree with or you don't find fun, don't do it. Play the way that you want to, but do keep in mind what I've said because it might help you a little bit. But if you're not finding it fun, you can do something else and that's fine. Again, if you're not playing the game, you're not going to earn any stars. I will also say that a lot of you guys are currently not subscribed, so I do recommend subscribing because I have a lot of intermediate and advanced videos as well as beginner videos, so I recommend you subscribe for that. It helps my channel a lot. I do appreciate any likes and comments too. The comments are especially useful for me because it helps me improve and get a more accurate picture of whatever I'm talking about. Even if it's just positive feedback, whatever it is, I'd appreciate it. Have a great day guys, GG.